What's up guys? Today we're diving into throwing things. And yes, throwing things and why I like throwing things so much. And there's actually some science behind it as well. So we're going to dive into some of the specifics here. We're talking about the EMGs. We're talking about the technique. We're going to talk about the landing itself. And so I want to dive in first and foremost into the EMG portion. So when we talk about EMGs, this is electromyography of a muscle. So it's how your brain sends signals to your muscle. And what we have here, anytime we throw something, uh, we have what's called rapid like doublet discharges at the very early stages of movement. And so it might look something like this, and that's in the very early time frame of, say, 50 milliseconds. If we did something slow and heavy, it might look something like this, where it's called a ramp principle. You see as that ramps up and gets higher and higher. What's interesting about this is this early doublet discharge here that we see in this portion Voila, happens when we do ballistic movements with maximal intent. We're trying to throw something as far as we can. And so this teaches the brain how to produce force rapidly. And early rate of force development has a lot to do with EMG activity. Are you able to activate your muscular system as fast as you can? Are you able to send the neural impulses to your brain as fast as you can? And what we see here is that when we throw something, in the most natural form, we get this high ballistic EMG at the beginning, which is awesome because this is at times difficult to reproduce because when we want to throw something, uh, like say example, you can't really throw a barbell, but for throwing a kettlebell like we have in these pictures here, what's pretty cool is that we can then manipulate how our body is firing and talking to our muscles. So we have that EMG activity. We have that doublet discharge, which is awesome. I'll just leave it here, doublet discharge which is highly associated with rfd rate of force development now that's really cool on top of this we want to be able to uh make sure that our technique is fine and so we're not doing heavy things we're not doing the compli not heavy things not doing complicated things like a hang clean or anything that really has technique we're doing something that's just throwing something so for the most part you're not really worried about how you're doing it outside of making sure it's done safely, obviously, but there's no catch portion. There's no expertise and technical portions. And so as you see here, we break down basically the four stages, one, two, three, and four. We see here, it's pretty straightforward. You load right here, right? You explode or you bet you get ready to explode. You begin that RFD, high rate of force development. You toss it and then you land. So those are the four portions of the movement itself. And uh, Coach Corey Slushinger talks about this a lot as well, why he likes some of these kettlebell throwing things because it has such minimal technique. So minimal technique is an awesome reason why we throw things. Another problem that we have with heavy stuff is when we throw heavy stuff or jump with heavy stuff, we have to land with heavy stuff. The nice thing about this is if you look at the movement itself, all these stages again, we don't have a landing issue because guess what? That kettlebell's flying away at the end. I'm not having to land in a jeopardized position. And one of the reasons why I think this is so beneficial is the fact that when you don't have to land in a jeopardized position, yes, we want to practice landing and producing eccentric rate of force development, but when we're only concerned about throwing this kettlebell as far as we can, and we're not concerned about how we land, there's no inhibition of the brain. So what happens is if we have brain here, and the brain goes, yo, I have to land in a certain way, land, um, and I don't want to put myself in a jeopardizing position. What it might do, it might actually act as a slight inhibitor, a little minus sign here, on how far you throw this thing or how far you actually engage with it because you have to land with it itself. Anyone who's done squat jumps or movements that are somewhat jeopardizing understands this. But what's wonderful here is in these positions, we don't have to worry about landing. So as we walk through the science of this one last time, we have the ballistic aspect of it. So we have what's it called doublet discharge. Doublet discharge is meaning that early RFD aspect, minimal technique, uh, just throwing something that's pretty straightforward and what's awesome is no, no landing problems so I like to think about it there's um, no breaks involved right your body is not doing anything subconsciously inhibiting your performance output so these in consideration when you take in consideration throwing stuff why it's so beneficial you have these three major areas right here that we looked at that all apply to this. So throwing things is wonderful. Why I like kettlebells and throwing kettlebells so much is typically the limiting factor in things you throw are the weight of it. So we're thinking about uh, things like a, uh, 
a medicine ball. We can't throw a heavy, heavy medicine ball and make that heavy of medicine balls. But a nice thing about the kettlebell, and while I'll give it some praise here, is the KB. You can go up to like 100 pounds. I've seen 200 pound ones even. For t I mean, again, I haven't tossed it personally. This one right here is only about 60 pounds. But you could think theoretically how that could be beneficial for you because now we're doing this max intense ballistic EMG stuff, minimal technique, landing not a problem, all with a load that's pretty reasonable. So this is something I've uh, been toying with myself something that makes a lot of sense from the science side, and something that could potentially have benefits. Again, this is a cool way that we can break down the science of movement, why we do movements, and some of the benefits that come along with it, so we can better understand optimal exercises for the adaptations we're trying to get. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought, and I appreciate you guys listening. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.